In this lecture, we'll learn the LMTT method of heat exchanger design for size selection. LMTT method, as you will recall from the previous video, is a way to do the size selection given when all the temperatures are available and the flow rates are available. So in the case of parallel flow, this would mean that you have the inlet temperature Ti, Thi and T, Tci, inlet temperatures and flow rates and outlet temperatures of hot and cold. Similarly, for a counter current, it would be the other way that inlet of, inlet of the cold side is here, hot side is here. But in, in this case, also we know all the four temperatures. So all the four temperatures uh, may not be immediately known, but two temperatures will be known. Third is a desired temperature. And given this, we can find the fourth temperature. So effectively, it is just a one-step calculation of all four temperatures. But what is not known here is the area. That is the size of the heat exchanger. How big a heat exchanger that we want, that is not known. So area of heat transfer or the heat exchanger area is not known. To do that, uh, we first look at the integral balance energy balance. So the integral energy balance for the heat exchanger here is done in an ideal uh, situation where this is the outer side and this is the inner side. So the uh, fluid, uh, hot fluid is going here and cold fluid is going here. And this is insulated from the surroundings. So insulated from the surrounding means we are neglecting any uh, convective heat transfer outside or radiative heat transfer outside. And this side also, there is no further uh, convective or radiative heat transfer. So these both are insulated. And the uh, flow is uh, unidirectional. It could be turbulent, but we are neglecting any axial conduction. So in all these uh, cases, if you take a control volume, for this entire uh, shell side and another control volume for entire tube side or the cold side, we can write that heat coming in, heat going out from this and heat uh, THO is what it is, the temperature at which it is going out. So for, for this, you know that Q, which is coming out from here is simply m dot cp into tho thi minus tho thi is higher than tho so it is thi minus tho and q is the same q which is leaving here has to enter only here it cannot go on that side because that side is insulated so because of that the same q is m dot cp of the cold fluid times tco minus tci because cold side TC outlet is more higher than the inlet. So it is TCO minus TCI. So this is an overall uh, integral energy balance over the entire hot fluid and entire cold fluid. And the way we have written this, it does not matter whether it is a parallel flow or a counter flow. This expression remains the same because the direction of uh, heating and uh, the direction of flow does not enter the overall energy balance. However, the direction of uh, flow will enter when we do a differential energy balance. So here we are going to do a differential energy balance. So we will recall the <coughs> nature of temperature profile for parallel flow, where you have both the flows coming in the same direction. So cold fluid uh, has an increased temperature from here to here hot fluid decreases from there to there. In the case of counter flow, hot fluid decreases, cold fluid increases, but cold fluid starts here and ends here. So in these uh, derivations, we are going to use a term called as uh, heat capacity rate, which is simply the product of mass flow rate and the specific heat. So M dot Cp is denoted by this a symbol capital C. So uh, just to make those simplifications of 
uh, expressions. Now, let us consider an elemental area along the direction of the heat exchanger along X. So this elemental area, there is a heat transfer from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. So DQ here is the heat removed from the hot fluid and added to the cold fluid. Now, if you notice here, along X direction, DTC, that is the cold side uh, temperature increases with X. That means your, the, the same heat which comes from here to here is DQ is written as minus CH DTH. So because here the temperature decreases with uh, distance along uh, X, so DTH is negative. Because DTH is negative, you add and put a negative sign here so that this entire term is positive. On the other hand, DTC is positive because this temperature is positive. So DQ, the heat that is removed from here is added to here. In both the cases, DQ is positive because this, this, this term is positive as well as this term is positive. However, for counter flow, both these temperature profiles decrease along the direction of X. Note that the temperature increase increases for the cold fluid along the flow direction. However, along this direction X, we have chosen as a coordinate, both hot and cold fluid temperatures decreases with X. So because both of them decreases with X, we have DQ is minus CH DTH and minus CC DTC. DTH is negative. So therefore, this entire term is positive. DTC is negative. Therefore, this entire term is positive. Now, the heat transfer between these both locations or these both locations can also be written in terms of the overall heat transfer coefficient. So same DQ now has a, it is heat transfer is transferred between two potential, this potential of higher temperature and lower temperature. And there are different uh, resistances here. We saw in the last video that there is a convective resistance, then there is fouling, then again conduction, then fouling, then again convective resistance. So all this resistance put together is your uh, one by UA or the conductance is UA. So for this same DQ, it, we wrote in terms of the bulk temperature here, we can also write it in terms of overall heat transfer coefficient. But now the temperature difference is between DT, uh, TH and TC. TH is this temperature, TC is this temperature. So this expression remains the same for parallel or counter flow. So this TH, this is TC this TH, this TC. So this expression remains the same. Only these expressions are different. Now we can write uh, D delta T, where delta T is nothing but TH minus TC. So D delta T is nothing but DTH minus DTC. So expression for DTH and DTC can be got from here. DTH is dq by minus ch, dtc is dq by minus cc. So d delta t is nothing but minus of 1 by ch plus 1 by cc times dq. Similarly, for counter flow or the counter current uh, heat exchanger, because this direction signs are different here, you will have this minus sign here, but uh, this minus is only for the H. So here H was negative, here uh, uh, CH was negative, here C, uh, C, C term is positive. So this is the only difference that you will see between parallel flow and counter flow, whereas this is the same. Now, 
we can substitute the uh, expression for ua delta t dq equal to ua delta t in this expression so here we have ua delta t and here you have d delta t so you bringing d delta t here and this one will have a da term so we have a differential equation for d delta t in terms of da or the x direction dx so this is area increases along this direction so that differential equation d delta t by delta t is u times this constant times ta can be integrated between two locations one and two what are one and two locations they are just the initial inlet and outlet in this case there is no clear inlet this is an inlet for hot outlet for cold location number two is outlet for hot inlet for cold so these are just locations along the uh, direction of the uh, pipes in the heat exchanger so this can be integrated a similar expression for the counter flow exists so only this term as we saw has got a, a positive sign here it is negative sign here so the integration of this is straightforward and then after integrating one can uh, substitute for expressions for uh, uh, ch and cc from the uh, expressions we derived before and these expressions look like this for parallel as well as counter uh, current flow with only exception in this uh, terms here but however if we do some simplifications and define delta t2 and delta t1 then these both expressions can be simplified into a single expression which is common to both except that the delta t2 here is the this is in the case of parallel flow you have uh, this is the inlet and this is the outlet or this is location one this is location two now delta t2 is the difference between hot fluid and cold fluid at location two delta t1 is difference between hot fluid and cold fluid at location one now as you notice here in case of parallel flow delta t1 for example is between i and i whereas for counter flow it is between i and o and o and i so the definition of delta t1 and delta t2 are different for parallel and uh, uh, counter flow however the total ex expression for the total heat uh, rate is simply ua times delta t2 minus delta t1 by ln of delta t2 by delta t1 this if you can recognize from our earlier lectures is nothing but your not direct temperature difference but it is the log log mean temperature difference so this portion is called as the log mean temperature difference now what is the lmtd method lmtd method as we uh, said at the beginning of this lecture is we have all the four temperatures given even all the four temperatures are given then we can use this expression to find the total heat heat rate this this could be either for the cold fluid or for the hot fluid it is the same because whatever uh, heat that is gained by the cold fluid is exactly equal to the heat lost by the hot fluid so once q is computed we can also compute lmtd because lmtd requires only the four temperatures so once q and lmtd are computed we can substitute in this expression to get our desired unknown which is area so area is nothing but q divided by u times delta t lm which is your lmtd so this way we have been able to design a given heat exchanger which is essentially meaning design a given area uh, design an area given the four temperatures 
in the case of uh, uh, the LMTD method, uh, we can show by some calculations that the log mean temperature difference for uh, in the case where the in inlet and outlet temperatures are exactly the same, but you have two designs. One is a parallel flow, other is a counter flow. In both uh, in these cases, we can show by some detailed calculations that the LMTD for the counter flow is always greater than the LMTD for parallel flow. Now, what does it in, uh, imply? We just saw that the area is calculated as Q by U times delta T LM. If the heat rate is constant, that means that is if a given heat rate for a given heat rate, the U is again constant because the flow rate and everything is constant, the, uh, this is a constant. Now, given a heat rate, the area required for a counter flow heat exchanger is smaller than parallel flow because this is larger for uh, counter flow. Or you could pose it in a different way for a given area, the counter uh, flow's heat rate is much more than the parallel flow's heat rate. So if, if the area is prescribed, one, one should use a par, uh, counter flow so that you, you're able to transfer more heat from, more rate of heat transfer from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. To summarize the LMTD method, it is mainly used for uh, size, size selection of heat exchangers or also, also called as a design of heat exchangers. We saw that the uh, heat rate expression is same irrespective of the arrangement, parallel or counter flow. And when all four temperatures are given, the steps are to find the uh, heat rate, then the LMTD, and from this, the area can be found out. Thank you.